Good afternoon, uh, everybody, and um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present. I'm not really here to uh, to tell you uh, what's going on in the UK overseas territories, uh, but from discussions with uh, Luke and uh, Pauline, I think the uh, the situation that Luke has presented is probably typical. But um, within the UK government, there is certainly a recognition that we need to do more and more means to help in uh, developing marine science uh, strategy and also the underpinning uh, data management framework. So watch this space um, on that one. Um, what I can do there, and I think I, I can best do uh, this afternoon, and I'll try and do it in, in just a few minutes, is that uh, in the UK we've been at this for quite some time, probably 15 to 20 years. And uh, whilst marine policy is developed within the UK, uh, there has been this long-standing need to address the data management requirements. And what I want to do in amongst these presentations is just pick on some of the key issues that uh, hopefully uh, you can learn from and do not repeat the same mistakes um, as we have done in the uh, in the UK. So we have the marine policy statement, which really encompasses all the international and regional um, uh, legislation that, um, that we have to deal with. The latest one there noted at the bottom is the EU's Marine Strategy Framework um, Directive, which identifies a whole load of different indicators and uh, that has to be underpinned by um, data collection, data monitoring, data publishing, and of course reporting at the, uh, at the EU, EU level. This was a, uh, a, a pilot project looking at um, some of the issues surrounding the complexity of the sea, and I think for the, for the lay person looking out onto the uh, onto the marine environment is quite easy to uh, to be fooled in in thinking it's a it's an empty space of course as we all know it's not an empty space it's extremely uh, extremely busy so how do we actually get to grips with all of those disparate data sets that you require and as I mentioned earlier in the region of 350 individual data sets uh, were identified um, by myself when I put the, uh, the data strategy together for the Marine Management Organization, which is charged to deliver marine planning in, uh, in England. The devolved administration, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, are responsible for their individual, uh, individual marine, uh, marine plans. But you can see the type of issue. And uh, this slide has been presented many, many, many times over the last um, 10 years, but it encapsulates um, the problem. So I think a big uh, decision for the uh, CMA2 project is the scope of the data. I mean, we've already heard about base reference information, bathymetry, socioeconomic data. Um, it was mentioned recently about shipping data. You know, is AIS, for example, a, uh, a way of solving that? In which case, is shipping intensity data within, within scope? Uh, it's, it can be a massive, it can be a massive undertaking, and we have to uh, limit um, what we want to include within CM, CMA2. Otherwise, it will never be finished. So, what we did in the UK, and I was kind of um, party to this, is take the take. Let's have a look at the take, take to actually take the marine policy statement. Look in, look at what it was supposed to deliver. Uh, one of the initial um, uh, requirements was to support marine planning planning and then of course uh, licensing as well and the, uh, the various steps that we went through within the, uh, the marine management organisations are shown there. But as you can see on the right hand side, all of that has to be underpinned by what's collectively known as marine evidence. So what is marine evidence? Well it's the science and data information uh, that we need. Uh, to basically support the evidence, uh, the evidence-based approach. Uh, everyone wants to um, uh, sign up to the collect once, use many times uh, principle, and uh, one of the ways that we were able to uh, deliver that was in setting up what we call the Marine Environmental Data and Information Network, or or MEDIN, um, and uh, that became part of the UK the Directory of Marine Observing Systems and also part of the UK MMAS 
the marine monitoring and assessment um, strategy. So one of the things that I did is take that complicated picture and um, I very much encourage you to systemize um, what you're doing you know, in terms of data collection, but also recognize the dependency between the various, uh, the various data sets. There's been discussion on about human pressures, or human pressures come from human activity data um, that may or may not be in scope, um, but all of that then needs to be uh, underpinned by basic reference information, core geographies, if you like. But what's important to realize, uh, and we've learned this from experience, none of these data sets actually exist as fully formed uh, GIS layers that you can draw on. They all require different sources, different methodologies, and a, and a lot of maintenance. So that was recognized um, by, uh, by looking at the various um, problems that we had with, with data, both institutional and, uh, and, and technological um, as well. So within the, uh, the Marine Environmental Data and Information Network, what we've done is created a resource that people can draw on for metadata creation, metadata management, etc. But also, just about to see at the bottom there, support for the creation of reference data sets. And all this falls within a policy context, and I, I, no doubt the European colleagues will, will mention it in a couple of days, of uh, INSPIRE, the Infrastructure for Spatial Information um, within Europe. And I think there's a lot in, in, in INSPIRE um, that, we can, uh, that we can draw down on for CMA. CMA 2, we have a marine data action plan to strengthen the reference data sets um, involving capacity building which was in some of those organizations that perhaps don't see the importance or don't have the, uh, the skill set to deliver data management as we, would, um, as we would like it. And a really good example of the type of portal that, um, that MEDIN is supporting, and I encourage you to have a look at this, uh, this portal, is the National Marine Planning Portal, and I think it is part of the ICANN um, network for, uh, that's been developed for marine planning uh, by Marine Scotland in, um, in, in Scotland. So uh, I'm going to not dwell on the support that the UK government hopefully will surprise it uh, will supply to its overseas uh, territories. But what I just want to very briefly uh, mention is that, of course, the UK's <coughs> remit uh, within the Caribbean doesn't only extend to the UK um, overseas territories. We've heard about charting responsibility, and uh, I have uh, I had a, a few more slides on. Uh, <coughs> On, on the areas of charting responsibility. But a lot of those reference data sets actually exist within, uh, within hydrographic <coughs> office charts. The problem, though, is that even though those data sets are now in electronic form, in the form of uh, the S57 standard, the IHO S57 standard, to be replaced by the S100 standard, the actual um, <coughs> lineage of that data is that it was captured from the original paper chart. So some of these key layers require a fair amount of re-engineering to, um, to, to create meaningful GIS layers that you require for all of those policy, um, policy decisions. And uh, th that's something that I personally have been involved in for a long, long time with the UKHO, with the IHO, and with, with, with others to actually create those um, reference layers that you see um, in that bottom uh, in that uh, in that in that bottom image. So to summary to summarise, uh, there is the marine policy statement. It calls for clean, healthy, safe, productive, biologically diverse ocean seas. No one's going to argue um, about that. The UK's marine science strategy addresses the, uh, the sporting re supporting requirements and. Uh, could well be rolled out to the, um, to the UK overseas uh, territories. But underpinning all of that is a robust framework of data, of data management, um, which is required to meet those aims and I think is critical to the development of the uh, Coastal Marine Atlas. Thank you very much. Thank you.